Good evening, Toastmasters, and welcome guests. How do you take an idea that you have for a speech and convert it into something that impacts the audience you're speaking to? How does that transition occur, going from that idea to something that really sings and rocks and rolls and does whatever you want it to do? Would you like to know the answer to that question? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. What we're going to do tonight is I'm going to share with you two questions that I ask myself. They are the two most important questions you can ever ask yourself when preparing a speech. We can go through all the details, and Toastmasters has unbelievable amount of details in every project and project after project. But if you get the foundation right, that's more important than all the details. So how do you know how to start your speech? What you should do in your introduction? How do you know what three points or five points or one point you want to put in the speech? How do you know what examples and stories and or statistics or quotes or whatever you want to put in your speech? How do you know how you want to conclude the speech? How, how in the world do you figure that out? You figure it out by asking yourself and answering two questions. First, what is my point of view? And second, what do I want my audience to be thinking and feeling when I finish? And that's what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to go through those two questions for you so you understand how to work with those questions. Because you answer those two questions and you're on your way. You have a focus with passion on what you're going to speak on, very narrow, very clear, and you're focused on your audience so that you're giving that passionate message to your audience. So let's start. What is your point of view? Now, when we start talking about a speech, we talk, start talking about having a topic or a subject, right? So give me an example. What would be a topic or a subject, any kind of topic or subject you could speak on? Music. Music. The weather. The weather. Favorite food. What's that? Like types of food. Finger food. Did you say finger food? <laughs> uh, yeah, finger food. Favorite okay, okay, food. food. Well, he said food. Okay. What else? History. History. A million topics, right? All kinds of topics. And whatever topic that you come up with that you want to speak on, because you hopefully have an interest in it, there are so many things you could say about it. You clearly can't take all of that and put it into a Toastmaster seven-minute speech, can you? Or even a 20-minute or 30-minute speech, because all of the material. So what is your point of view changes that. The point of view is what is your opinion about that topic? What do you want to say about it? Do you want to take a stand? Do you have something that you, a message that you want to convey, something you want to remember? The point of view is your personal, passionate opinion about that topic. And when you have that point of view clear, all of a sudden, you are now looking for examples, stories, points, everything you're looking for fits into the point of view. It's not the entire topic anymore, is it? It becomes very focused, very narrow. Now to bring this home to you in a very clear way, I'm gonna use an example. I'm gonna pick a topic that probably none of you would ever pick so that we're not dealing with something that we're familiar with. Let's talk about broccoli. So supposing that your topic was broccoli, what you could talk about all kinds of things. You could, there's a whole encyclopedia. There's, there's books on broccoli. There's, I guess, in college, there's a whole class on broccoli. I suppose in your graduate school, but you only got seven minutes, so you need a point of view. So the question would be, what is your point of view on broccoli? Let me give you some examples. I hate broccoli. That's a point of view. Then you'd give a whole speech about how you hate broccoli. Broccoli has so many health benefits. Then you'd give a whole speech on the health benefits of broccoli. There are so many varieties of broccoli, and there are. So you would give a speech about the varieties, or you'd give a speech on the history of broccoli, or you could give a speech on the various uh, unsuccessful ways that you've gotten kid, trying to get kids to eat broccoli. Uh, 
or you could give a speech about recipes and, and ways to uh, make broccoli and make broccoli recipes. You see all the different points of view there? Each one is a speech unto itself. And now all of a sudden broccoli is not just a topic anymore, it's your point of view, your angle on broccoli. So for example, if I wanted to take a, a do a speech and I hated broccoli, I happen to love broccoli, but let's suppose that I hated broccoli. Then I probably think I'm gonna do a humorous speech. And I was, I hate broccoli. I hate it so much that when people invite me over to their house, the first thing I do is I go in and check the refrigerator and make sure there's no broccoli in that refrigerator. <laughs> there is, I'm leaving, first thing. Everyone knows I hate broccoli. So you begin to see that, that all of a sudden I take the point of view and then it becomes something. It becomes a serious speech or a funny speech or an inspirational speech. It becomes whatever it is. Now take a moment right now. I want you to think about a topic that you're interested in, whatever it is, just to yourself right now. And now I want you to think about what is your point of view on that, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you for um, some examples. So what? take a topic and come up with a point of view right now. Do, 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 so who has a topic and a point of view? Please share. Yes. Gas, a way to express yourself with movement. A by, way to express yourself movement. with movement. Okay, excellent. Another one. Real estate and it's a good way to build wealth. A good way to build wealth. So that's your point of view. Excellent. Another one. The importance of getting started. I don't know what you do. <laughs> What's that? Like the importance of getting started. Like, you know, anything you do, get started, move. Keep your, keep your feet moving. Ah, okay, okay. So you're, getting, you're beginning to get into the idea of it. Okay, so let's try something else now. Remember that this concept of the point of view is not simply for prepared speeches. It is equally important, as a matter of fact, more important than table topics. Because what do you do when you're on table topics? You get the topic and you've got to immediately stand up and talk. And so what you'll see some of us do is we start immediately talking maybe five, 10 seconds, sometimes 15 seconds. We're just, we're, we're just BSing it really. <laughs> and in the back of our mind, what's my point of view? What's my angle? Where am I going with this? And bam, the second you get the point of view, then you see a switch and, and zoom right down the lane because now we know where to go. So what you want to do when you get a table topics is bluff it for a few seconds until you figure out the point of view. Once you get that point of view, you know how to give the rest of the speech and you're on your way. Without the point of view, you're just kind of stumbling around aimlessly, and you know the feeling of, of, of doing that, okay? So right now I'm gonna give you a table topic. You're not gonna stand up, you're not gonna give the table topic. I just want you to think, what is your point of view on this table topic? Our political environment with this recent campaign is What's your point of view on the political campaign that just occurred? Okay, so something that, okay, so now, now, yes. What does it say? Dividing or very divisive? So you, the point of view is very divisive and then you would take that and run with why is it divisive? Someone else have another point of view? You all agree? With Trenton? Okay, so <laughs> I wanted to get multiple <laughs> points of view here, but I should, I should have picked a different topic. Yes, Paul. Nothing's perfect. Just go, keep, keep, keep engaged. There you go, okay, so there's, there's an alternative, mm -hmm. the only alternative, so that there, is a, there is an alternative. The point of view is, what is your point of view? Questions about point of view. It's not a right or wrong question. There is no right or wrong answers, no, because who is the answer for? It's, it's your personal answer for you, whatever works for you. Now, understand that, that let, let me, and Margaret, I'll get to you in just a second. That's a very important question because the point of view is your private guidance system to help you in putting together your speech. You may not actually state it in the words that you're stating it to yourself. You may have a different way of phrasing it because it fits more appropriately in the way you talk to the audience about it. This is your own personal guidance system because it tells you, 
yeah, this is what I want to talk about. This is the story I need to talk about. This is the example I need to use. No, I don't need to use that. I need to get rid of that. The focus, Margaret. What if you know that your point of, that there is a very strong point of view contrary to your point of view in the public domain? All right, excellent, excellent question. And that will kind of say, actually that will segue into the second part and we're gonna segue in with the answer to that question by going into the second question. Okay. Which is, what do I want my audience to be thinking and feeling when I finish? This is a question that puts the audience first because when you want to speak on a topic, you're interested in it, right? You think it's the greatest thing since peanut butter. <laughs> you, you, love, you could speak on it, talk on it all day, but does anyone else care about it? Are, are they as interested in it as you are? Do they even understand it? Maybe, maybe it yes, maybe no. Depends. It depends, it could change. You've got to know who your audience is. You've got to think about your audience and think about how do I get them interested in my speech? Four, there's, a, there's a, an acronym I have, CURB, C-U-R-B. Four things to think about as you think about your audience. C stands for curiosity. How do I create curiosity that the audience becomes curious about what I'm gonna say? U is understand. Does the audience understand this the way I do? And if they don't, what do I need to share with them that they will have some understanding? We have some common ground. R is relate. How do I get the audience to relate to my message that they connect with it from their personal life, their point of view, where they're coming from? How do I connect them into what I'm saying? Relate. And the last one is B, benefit. How will the audience benefit from my message? So. Curiosity, understand, relate, benefit, that's curb. Now, Margaret, coming back to your question, when you know your audience, it affects how you construct your speech. If you know there's gonna be people opposed to your point of view in the audience, if they're there, then you have to construct the speech in a way to address them, to show that you understand them, to connect with them in some way, that, that they will be willing to listen to you, and you have to think about how can I get past the normal barriers? So you have a whole different thinking process when you are going up in front of an audience where there's people that are gonna disagree with you in terms of how you construct it to, to, to open their minds to at least listen to you. And this is something I have a lot of specialist work in. I, I was in competitive debate in high school and college. I went to the national championships in college. I had to learn how to do this very thing. And, it is not easy, but it is, a, it, is a, it is a part of the task. So the question is, is what do I want my audience to be thinking and feeling? Now, let me give you an example here of a speaker that was a member of this club for many years as a distinguished Toastmaster like Paul and competed in the International Speech Contest, and that was Pia Turner. And I worked with her on her speech where she, got, where she placed third at the district championships for the entire Riverside town and the speech was the other side of the curtain, and her, her topic was about her life experiences on the stage and television as an actress, as, an, as a producer, and as an agent. That's the topic. Her point of view was that you have to go after every opportunity and grab the opportunities, even if you don't know at that time whether you can do it or you even have the, all the experience to do it, you gotta grab the opportunities when they come, take every one you can get. That was her point of view, all right? How did that convert into what do I want my audience to be thinking and feeling? And so what it did is, is she converted that in a way that it became the ending line of her speech. We regret more those things we don't do than those things we do do. Which is another way of saying grab the opportunity but she converted it in terms of the language in a way that was effective for the audience, and she got third place at the uh, district championships with that, with that speech. There's an example of going from the topic to the point of view, and then what's in it for the audience, always think about the audience. There is, inside of all of you, a great speech waiting to be delivered. <laughs> this is the truth. 
If you start with knowing a clear point of view on that topic you want to speak on, and you put your audience first, you will have the foundation to build that speech. Madame Postmaster.